Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and today we're going to start getting into some do-it-yourself tools. And not just normal tools, these are welding tools that you can't find off the shelf. Uh, there's a tool out there that you see people make up all the time, and we're going to build one for you right now. And that's a tool, some people call it the third hand. And you say, well, what the heck's a third hand? Well, when you're in the shop and you're welding, or you want to put a little piece in place right here. For instance, if I wanted to tack weld this right now, this is stainless steel, so it's non-magnetic, so I just can't put my magnet up there and, and tack it. But if I had another person over here holding it for me while I make that tack, it sure makes life a lot easier. Well, you don't always have that third person, so we're going to build a little tool that's designed to do nothing more than just hold that in place while you tack weld, and then you can take it out, out of the way, or you can keep it on there and use it as an additional ground. Uh, low cost, easy to build, called the third hand. Some people call it the other hand, but there's all kinds of names for it. But uh, I went down to a local hardware store, and I bought two pieces of rebar. Uh, they were like a buck 18 a piece, you know, so I've got, uh, I've got less than $3 invested in this. And then uh, I went through my scrap bin, and I found a little counterweight, and I'll show you what that's for a little bit later. It's actually where, where we weld this on to give this, this, uh, this other hand a little different balance. So anyway, that's all we need, and uh, I still have about a fourth of a, a, a can of spray paint in the back, so you know, I'm, I'm gonna have uh, something like $4 invested if you really look at the actual costs of this. So I'm just gonna show you how I build it, and you'll see us using it on the set different places. You see me using this at the racetrack as well, because I, I don't have a lot of help at a lot of the tracks. So anyway, uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this rebar, and it's got a rough edge because they just sheared it off. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be doing some grinding or, or polishing. You can do it any way you want. You can do it on a bench grinder. Uh, we happen to have a, a couple of different four inch grinders over here portable. So uh, anyway, you wanna get all the edges off, make sure there's no sharp edges whatsoever. Uh, then we're gonna do the bending. Now, I'm gonna do cold bending. If you wanna put this uh, you know, in your vise and, and heat it up and bend it around, that's okay too. But this is rebar, so it's pretty soft, and I've got a little cheater bar that I found back there. So I'm gonna see if I can cold bend it first. And if I can't, then I'll, I'll turn the torch on, heat it up, and bend it around. So uh, let me get my gear on and we'll get started. Okay, now here are the three parts that I purchased. Again, I didn't purchase this when I found it in the scrap bin, but what I did was I, uh, I took this piece right here, I, I ground off, made sure there's no burrs on it, uh, and I just cold worked it, cold bent it using a little, little cheater bar here, leveraged it into kind of a U-shape. Now, there's, there's no system or there's no particular dimension you have to worry about. All you're doing is you're building this to fit your shop. Now you may want to build some of these larger or even smaller. So this is just a good handyman size. So uh, just, just a little U-shape like that. And then this piece right here, yeah, I made it about three inches long and I bent it to a 90. I ground it down to a semi-point. And, and the reason I didn't put a, an actual point on it is because I want to be able to touch this on top of a flat piece. Like this is actually going to hold that in place so I can tack it and weld it. So this fits me best. So you can grind it to a finer point or a less fine point. Just take a look at your application. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld the two of these together. And I'm just gonna TIG weld it right here. And once it's welded, then I'm going to put a counterbalance on it. Now this counterbalance can be any weight. You don't have to put a counterbalance on it, just depending on how heavy a parts you're gonna be holding in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and put, uh, I mean this thing's probably a couple, three or four ounces, but I'm gonna put one right here in place, weld it in place, and then, then I'm gonna rattle can spray paint it so it looks halfway decent. So uh, let me get my gear on and I'll finish it off.
Okay, so you know what I did was I, I took the rebar, I, I deburred it, I formed it, I put it in place, I TIG welded. Uh, you can MIG weld it if you want, but I TIG welded it and it uh, welds up very nicely. Then I put this counterweight on and I welded it on two sides. Now, if you'll notice, it serves a purpose for this particular part, for this particular application. So this, this little piece that I've got, I needed a method of holding it in place only long enough to where I can tack it. And once I tack it, then this can go away. Now, you can get creative with these things because also they work well as a ground or a secondary ground. So you'll see people take these tips right here and they replace them with a little copper piece or a brass piece and it really grounds well. So if you start getting into some electronics type of equipment, and again, you can make these things bigger, smaller, any way that you want. Now we're going to, as soon as we leave here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna spray paint this. I think I've got black. Anyway, whatever color I've got out there, uh, we're just gonna spray paint it and uh, we'll show you the final uh, in a B-roll shot. So uh, anyway, I've got, I've got less than $5 tied into this. It, it just, it, it used just some pretty standard equipment in their shop. I cold bent everything with a vise. I used a little cheater bar, uh, got a little hand grinder again. You can use your, your pedestal grinder. You can use anything just to deburr it and put the shape on there. Uh, so it's, uh, it's good to go and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.